please don't be disturbed by uh, the new setup. I'm trying to see if I can record these lectures using my iPhone and I'm doing it from our home. Today I'll briefly talk about another important concept in post-colonial studies that I've used quite often but I've never explained it and that is essentialism. Originally in philosophy, especially in Western philosophy, essentialism comes from Plato, especially from Plato's theory of forms and in using the theory of forms as he tries to discuss how things are formed, how things are shaped. And according to Plato, things have two constituents, right? Matter, right? And uh, a form. And then someone, some constructor brings the two together. But that then he also posits that because of that, everything has its own permanent, immutable, unchangeable essence. Now, in post-colonial studies, essentialism becomes prominent because the colonizers in their writings, even in their policies, assume that the natives, may they be Africans, Indians, or from any other part of the world, have certain fixed essences. The qualities that they attribute to the natives are thus essentialized. They are made as if they are part of an entire racial group. And then based on those qualities, after they have been attributed to a group, after they have been normalized, written about, researched about, policies are developed to deal with huge populations. Now, this aspect of it uh, is very clearly discussed by Sara Soleri in her book, Rhetorics of British India. Even the title gives you uh, a page from a British publication which actually categorized people. So essentialism in sciences enabled one more thing. It enabled taxonomies because it, if you could imagine fixed essences of things, then you could develop systems of categorizing animals and plants. But the colonizers use the same system in categorizing people. So they will name a group, let's say the Patans, and then they would attribute essential qualities to them, the Hindus, the Muslims. Since essentialism relies on this unchanging, immutable, immutable essence, that is why in post-colonial theory we challenge all essentialized views, assumptions about the natives or about anyone, about gender, about race, about ethnicity, national origin. And so as a scholar of post-colonial studies, whenever you're writing about something, whenever you're reading a novel or you're writing a paper, do ask yourself whether or not you are falling for that trap, right, of imagining an essentialized native identity, cultural or individual, because just as we don't want the colonizers to essentialize the natives, or Anywhere else in the world, we don't want anyone to essentialize us because as a type or as a sex or as a gender. Similarly, we don't want in our own work to come across as someone who relies on even a romanticized, essentialized view of a people, a group or an individual. So overall, essentialism relies on discursive practices that posit that a certain group, a certain individual, a certain ethnicity, a gender, a region can have certain fixed essences and then that those essences are immutable and based on them, those essentialized ideas, powerful constituencies like the colonizers can then define and categorize people. And that is why in post-colonial theory, Essentialism is kind of a bad word and is not really advisable to be used without, you know, a critique of it in the process of using the term. So that's what briefly, in my view, essentialism means. It has a Greek origin. It comes from Plato. It was employed in sciences, then in social sciences, and then within the colonial context, especially in colonial anthropology and colonial study of native cultures. So I hope that uh, clarifies this term that I often use in my lectures. And if you have any questions, please post them below in the comment section. And if you would like me to cover any other concept, also let me know about it. But thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for bearing with this new 
experiment in setup. I will now see you next time. Thank you.